Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's so great to see all of you here. For my subscribers, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you're newly watching this video, my name is Victoria Ayo. I am a real estate agent and I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you become a part of my YouTube family and you don't miss out on any of the weekly content I have to share. So today guys, I wanted to talk about some of the hidden fees associated with buying a home. Um, I wanna talk about specifically 10 hidden fees um, associated with buying a home or 10 hidden costs that people don't think about um, when they go through the process of buying a home. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. So a lot of us, when we come, when we think about buying a home, all we think about is the purchase price. We just think, okay, so this home is going to cost me, I don't know, like $200,000 and that's it. You know, I'm gonna go to the bank, I'm gonna go to the le or a lender or whatever, and I'm going to get a loan for $200,000 and that'll be it. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> You have so many other fees you need to think about. And in this video, I just kind of wanted to provide you with the top 10, in my opinion. Now, there are other fees associated in buying a home. And the more you work with a realtor or when you work with a realtor um, or a real estate agent, you know, they will be able to completely break down all these fees for you and kind of tell you what to expect so you're not completely cut off guard. Typically, I always tell a lot of my clients to save about seven to 10% of um, of the total purchase price if they can because of these hidden fees I've just talked about. You know, when they come up, you want to be sure that you are prepared. You want to be sure that you are ready and nothing catches you off guard. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So the first fee, um, the first hidden fee a lot of people miss is a home inspection. What exactly is a home inspection? A home inspection is an inspection done on the property. So a home inspection can cost typically around $500 to $600 and it's conducted by, an, um, by a home inspector who will come in you know like do inspections from literally the top of the house all the way to like the structure everything just looking wall to wall looking for any possible thing wrong with the house guys this is a fee that is usually paid up front and it's highly recommended don't try to think about you know like okay well let me save a couple of hundred dollars now um you know and i'll be fine listen i've sold homes and i've dealt with clients or i've seen homes where um where you know from the just looking at the home the home looked fine but after we got a home inspection guys we found out that there were like major issues and so we, you know we sometimes found out you know like there were electrical issues and even foundational issues at this point you kind of have to consider like okay is it worth me spending a hundred dollars you know like a few hundred dollars now or spend thousands of dollars later on down the road my thing is I would always like to spend a couple of hundred now and just know what I'm getting myself into before, you know, like I move into a house and I just, you know, I, I find out, oh my gosh, you know, like everything is basically wrong with this home. So guys, always get a home inspection. Even if it's a new construction property, always get a home inspection. A new construction, I would even recommend getting a home inspection twice or two times, but I'm gonna explain that in another video, or if you have any questions on that, you can feel free to reach out to me and I can expound in more detail what I mean by that. All right guys, so let's move on to the second hidden cost of buying a home. The second one I wanna talk about is an earnest money deposit. An earnest money deposit is typically a check that's paid up front to the seller. The earnest money deposit, if you can, you can think of it as a security deposit for the seller. It lets the seller know that you are very interested in buying this home and essentially, it's your, you know, a lot of us realtors, a lot of professional real estate professionals, we call it your skin in the game. When you give the earnest money deposit, you're essentially telling the seller, okay, I'm very serious and I want you to go ahead and kind of take this house off the market and hold it for me to conduct all my inspections and everything I need to do during this period. So it's typically about one to three percent of the total purchase price of the home and it can be returned during due diligence period let's say you know going back with to the home inspector if the home inspector were to find something wrong with the house during your due diligence period you can actually get your earnest money back or let's say you know the home inspection report comes back and you're completely happy with it 
the earnest money deposit can actually be put towards your purchase price or it can actually be put towards the purchase of your home. So either case, it's not like you would be necessarily losing your earnest money deposit. Now there are situations where you would end up losing your earnest money deposit, but guys, this is just, it's just a mess. And hopefully your real estate agent or a real estate professional can help you make to make sure that this does not happen to you because you don't want to end up being screwed. Which brings me to the third hidden cause, which is an appraisal. So an appraisal is used to determine if the home's value is appropriate based on, based on the location, based on condition, and based on other features. It's essentially kind of a security blanket for the, for the lender. It comforts the lender and lets them know that, you know, they are lending you the right amount of money. Um, they're not lending you way too much money than what your house is worth. That essentially is what a home appraisal is. So guys, the fourth thing, the fourth hidden cause I wanted to talk about are property taxes. Property taxes are usually paid at closing and they actually differ based on your location. For example, North Carolina does not have the same property taxes as South Carolina, even though they're really close. So each state operates differently in regards to the percentage of the property tax to be paid. Normally in North and South Carolina, they are paid twice a year, depending on when you buy your home. So property taxes can actually be prorated um, based on the time that you buy the home. Let's say you buy the home in September. Obviously guys, you won't end up paying from January to September. You, your property taxes will be prorated and you would actually pay from about, I believe, I believe if I'm not mistaken, from about September to December. But it's always great to ask questions um, ask the county, you know, the state to make sure that you know exactly the amount of money that you need to pay in regards to your property taxes. Okay guys, so which brings me to my fifth hidden cost, which is a homeowner's insurance. A homeowner's insurance is typically paid at closing and it's normally rolled into your regular mortgage monthly payment. So it won't be like you're paying your mortgage and then you're paying your homeowner's insurance. Um, it's all typically just rolled into one big payment and it actually helps you so you don't forget forget, you know, like, oh my gosh, you know, like I need to pay my homeowner's insurance. It's actually all included. And this fee typically ranges from about $100 to about $300. And so it just makes your life that much easier knowing that, okay, it's part of my mortgage payment and I necessarily don't have to worry about it. Which brings me to my six hidden costs or hidden fees that a lot of people don't think about are school taxes. We've talked about property taxes and now we're going to talk about school taxes. School taxes guys are actually paid at closing and this kind of tax you need to pay attention to because this kind of tax can actually get really expensive depending on the neighborhood or the area that you are looking to buy in. Some counties can collect up to $2,000 quarterly and sometimes you know you may be required to pay a whole year's worth at closing so if you're paying two thousand dollars quarterly that means that two thousand dollars times four so you will be paying eight thousand dollars all payable immediately at closing. The whole purpose of a school tax is to help upkeep the local education system. For some parents, this can be a great investment. For others, not so much. So guys, you just always want to weigh what, you're, um, what you want and to see like, okay, is it worth it for me to live in this area with this really nice school? Or should I go live somewhere else with lower school taxes? So everything guys is absolutely up to you to decide and to think about. So always ask questions and always just before you put in an offer, before you fall in love with the house, make sure you know everything you can about the house. Ask your real estate professional, they will tell you. So which brings me to my seventh um, hidden cost or hidden fee, which is a private mortgage insurance. So private mortgage insurance is an insurance that lenders um, require when you do not have up to 20% of equity on a home or on your property. So if you put down about 20% on a home, the PMI or the private mortgage insurance guys will actually fall off because that means that you have already hit 
20% of equity on your home. If you do not have 20% to put down on a home, you just keep on making your monthly payments, you know, um, on your home. And once you hit that 20% mark, the private mortgage insurance guys just falls off right off the bat without you even having to think about it. So that means that like, if you were paying about $1,000 on your, on your home, you can actually, the, with the private mortgage insurance, it can be less than that 1,000, somewhere in the night hundred dollars. So, which brings me to my next hidden cause or hidden fee, which are transfer fees. So transfer fees, if you sell, if you, if you exchange ownership in any state or county, typically you are required to pay a transfer fee. Transfer fee is basically like, okay, so I just bought this car and I'm the new owner and I want to transfer, you know, like ownership of this car to my name. Therefore, I have to pay my county. I have to pay North or South Carolina their bid as well. This typically can range based on your state, based on your county. Okay, so for example, in the state of North Carolina, the transfer fee is $1 for every $500 of ownership. For example, if I were to buy a $200,000 house, I would end up paying roughly a transfer fee of about $600. That's just in North Carolina, as I, as I mentioned. In South Carolina, it's completely different. In, in South Carolina, it's completely different in that the transfer fee is about $2.50 per thousand and an additional about, I think roughly about a dollar, a dollar ten cents per county. I don't even know what that means or I don't even know how that's calculated, but I just know it because I deal with so many, so much of this. So as I mentioned, it differs from state. North Carolina is a little bit more, um, is a little bit more straightforward and easier to calculate versus South Carolina. So guys, the important things to remember about a transfer fee is that you just need to make sure that you're paying the right amount for your county and also the state and make sure that you do this within a year of ownership. I think most I think most states and most counties actually re um, require within a year or less. Some people, um, you know, like some jurisdictions, it could be less than that. You just need to do your research and make sure that you are actually abiding by the state and county's requirement. So which brings me to my ninth hidden cause, which is a title insurance. Title insurance is something in real estate that isn't really discussed or isn't really talked about. And this guys is typically paid at closing. It's insurance that protects the lender from financial loss due to any defects to the title. If there are any defects to the title, guys, this will actually be a fee that it has to be paid by the buyer. And this could end up costing you thousands of dollars. So it is so important for you to do all your research and make sure that before you buy your home or before you get into your property that there are no defects anywhere, especially with the title, because this is not very talked about. It's not talked about much anymore, but guys, this can end up costing you thousands of dollars if you do not ask the right questions and also if you do not pay the if you do if you just don't pay attention. So which brings me to my final hidden cause, which are simply moving fees. A lot of people don't think about the cost associating with moving. You know, just moving from one house to another house can be so expensive and not even thinking about like if you're moving from state to state or even country, like if you're moving from state to state, it can even get even more expensive in thousands of dollars here. So it's always important guys to budget enough. You know, at the beginning of the video, I said that I always advise to budget for at least seven to 10% of your total purchase price when you're thinking of buying a home or moving. And some of those fees that I talked about is also associated with moving. Some of that moving fees, everything, you know, everything I've talked about in this video should be covered with that seven to 10% that you end up saving for your home. So calculate how much it would take you to move to an area, you know, like calculate, okay, how much do I need to set up for utilities, for internet connection, whatever it is, you know, like in that area, cable, anything it is, calculate all that into your moving fees and make sure that you have enough money saved up and so you are not caught by surprise essentially. So guys, there you have it. These are the top hidden fees um, of moving 
or the top hidden fees of buying a property or just going through the home buying process. If you think I have missed out on any, I want you to go ahead and let me know in that comment section. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe right now so you don't miss out on any of the other weekly content I have to share on here. Thanks guys, bye.